I believe some of these things that are done, uh, that, that do, they're doing, uh, they are deliberately trying to do things so that Daimler gets the benefit. And at the end of the day, they get the politically aligned DPP to say that because of these uh, mistakes or because of these reasons, no charge should be brought against Daimler. Because the high court judge presiding over the multi-million dollar defamation lawsuit filed by businessman Nazar and Azradin Mohammed against social media commentator Mikhail Rodriguez, also known as the Guyanese critic, has placed a gag order on the social media commentator. We really think that there is something else going on here that we don't know about. Why would you be protecting rapists? Why? What is what is what is the end game there? It didn't make any sense to me. I met with the with Dr. Air Finale. When I met with him, Nigel Ramo was walking out of the state house. I don't know if that was an ambush. Now here it is, the lawyer saying that he has just conducted an interview. Now if this man is a suspect. This man is a suspect in a rape. Allegation is made against him with rape. What type of interview are we talking about here? What type of interview we are talking about? All that should happen, as I said, the allegation should be put to him. He should be arrested and he should be cautioned. Me. The Kyle Rodriguez is before the High Court on an allegation that he, on February 17, 2024, and up to present, defamed the Mohames through Facebook programs where he publicly uttered and broadcasted several untrue and defamatory statements about the businessman. The Mohames are demanding that Rodriguez pays in excess of $200 million for defamation. Because I've been shamed, I've been scorned, and I need vindication, not for me, but for victims, for these children, and my heart breaks for them. I have nieces, I have. I just have a heart. I'm sorry, but it's it's that's just how it is. The man is cooperating with the police. He has just conducted an interview of which he denied all the allegations and trouble right away. This is deliberate, I think, because I believe they know. And they're deliberately doing that so that at the end of the day, that on the, a the technicality, they're gonna charge them. They are doing the dirtiest of the dirt to people here to women especially and to, to little boys, the children, it's uh, it's atrocious. It's something that uh, these people need to go to prison. They need, this is something that you need to put people in prison for. One love, Delta 9 family, welcome back to the flight. Now, if you haven't already, take some time out, press that thumbs up button and subscribe so that you'll stay updated on all these entertaining, trending topics in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. As Mr. Conway pointed out, our allegation of, uh, against him and myself and others of conspiracy to commit fraud, Conway arrested, the whole, the whole um, squad of policemen went to his workplace to arrest him. In my case, when they understand that I was due to traveling to Guyana on the 19th of May, 2021, they turned up at the airport. They turned up at the Timiri airport, about four of them, to arrest me on arrival. And you, you, you want to know why we say this is an animal farm? All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. So Jaram Lal is given real preferential treatment. And let me go further. Let me go further. All right. You invite him to the station. I can't tell what they think. So you invite him, he turned up with his lawyer and uh, at the Covenjal police station yesterday morning at um, nine o'clock. And here what here and, and, and I'm saying this to think the people to understand, including the police. I believe some of these things that are done uh, that, that they're doing, uh, they are deliberately trying to do things so that Daimler gets the benefit. And at the end of the day, they get the politically aligned DPP to say that because of these uh, mistakes or because of these reasons, no charge should be brought against Daimler. Because once Daimler goes to the station, the, the first thing you should do is put the allegation to him. It is alleged that so and so person that on such and such a time you did so, 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 so. And then immediately after the allegation is put to him, he's arrested based on that and he is cautioned. And then like what the police say, you caution the person, then arrest. You have to arrest the person and you caution him. You tell him of his rights to, re um, of his right to remain silent unless he wish to do so.
and that anything he say will be taken down, will be taken down in writing and may be given in e evidence against him. Caution, according to the judge's rule, you caution him. Now here it is, the lawyer saying that he has just conducted an interview. Now if this man is a suspect, this man is a suspect in a rape. Allegation is made against him with rape. What type of interview are we talking about here? What type of interview we are talking about? All that should happen, as I said, the allegation should be put to him. He should be arrested and he should be cautioned. And if he elects to uh, make a statement after being cautioned, is there no interview? It is not an interview. It's a caution statement being taken from him. A caution, Iron, uh, um, you're taking notes. A caution statement. So this thing with the lawyer saying, and let me repeat again. Uh, he said, Mr. Damlal, um, the police invited Mr. Um, Damlal for report to report to the Kovajan police station. He's cooperating with the police. He has just conducted an interview of which he denied all the allegations and trouble right away. This is deliberate, I think, because I believe they know. And they're deliberately doing that so that at the end of the day, that the, on, a, on a technicality, they're going to charge them. I say again, he goes to the station, the allegation is put to him. It is alleged that on such and such a date or between such and such a time, you did so, 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 so. You are under arrest for this uh, in relation to this matter. Then immediately he is cautioned. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. And anything you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. And thereafter, it is not no interview. If he likes to make a statement, it's a caution statement. So when you hear the lawyer telling us that um, he was interviewed right away, right away, they say something they said both Ghana falls. Both Ghana falls. Right away, something is wrong. Chinese man says something wrong. Something wrong. So it is a I now you understand. Let me let me say this. I understand. I don't know how true it is that a certain person or persons from CID headquarters have been asked to conduct or have been instructed to conduct this um investigation in this into this allegation against them. And when I hear the name or the names, I say clearly they are hustling to cover this matter up because one of the persons whose name was called is one who have he has had over the years in recent times some of the most damning allegations of corruption leveled against him take big money for cover up more than all this stuff. those are the allegations so in the area that he um conducting is one of them yeah and everett we don't call it miranda rights in guyana in the U.S., they call it the Miranda rights, but in Guyana, is the judge's rule caution one, caution before got cautioned before charge. Once you're arrested, you are cautioned. So I understand that is going on. And to was it a interview or was it a caution statement? Two completely different things. That means two completely different situations are being experienced and went down right there which means there's a different outcome that we might not even be aware of it means that this case might already be done over and see but we the public we the persons that you know might not have the privy to what's going on allegedly in the background are going to be the last to know but what the top cop is saying right there is that how it is looking right now from his experiences, from his many years of experiences in high ranks in the same force, the situation that the liar talking about, but is an interview, it is supposed to be no interview. Allegedly, it's supposed to be something completely different. And that's what we're now right there in front of the face. So it seems like the case that corruption and the corruption allegedly is being exposed right there by top cop slow always on the case slow never letting it go slow making sure that they know we know are we gonna expose you slow 
You see what I'm saying? Exactly. And that's always going down right now. The watchman might be the person that is very pivotal in making this all go away because he is now claiming, allegedly, that she was never here that day. I ain't never see no person like that here that day. So if that's another witness that's saying that she was never there that day. Now it's two persons' words against her words. Now let's see if that's one of the things that's actually used, allegedly, because that might be one of the cases where this situation has already been open and shut, allegedly. Allegedly, all the many men's enemies are being dealt with and being dealt with swiftly and in the public because watch who will get gagged up who will get buried alive who will get in a whole lot of other situations piled upon their heads right now that is beyond some of the pressure that most men would ever want to have to deal with actually being jailed for not just one not just two but allegedly more than Probably more than we could count on our hands if this last victim was telling the truth. Allegedly, it seems like Melly Mel's enemies are being dealt with by a higher force because everybody being dealt with swiftly, severely, and so that everybody can see. Don't go against, allegedly, don't go against the Lord's anointed. The High Court judge presiding over the multi-million dollar defamation lawsuit filed by businessman Nazar and Azradin Mohammed against social media commentator Mikhail Rodriguez, also known as the Guyanese critic, has placed a gag order on the social media commentator. The order by Justice Navinja Singh restricts Rodriguez from uttering, repeating, posting, printing, sharing, reproducing, broadcasting or otherwise disseminating either by video, audio broadcast print, social media or by other electronic means the offending words, utterances, statements and publications or words, utterances, statements and publications similar to those made. The Kyle Rodriguez is before the High Court on an allegation that he, on February 17, 2024 and up to present, defamed the Mohames through Facebook programs where he publicly uttered and broadcasted several untrue and defamatory statements about the businessman. The Mohames are demanding that Rodriguez pays in excess of $200 million for defamation. Angry. Angry. Nothing but rage. Nothing but absolute rage. And I lost a lot of faith in the women especially. The men, I was very, I was very surprised at the fact that people just took themselves out of the situation. Um, it, it made me really think that there is something else going on here that we don't know about. Why would you be protecting Rivas? Why? What is what is what is the end game there? It didn't make any sense to me. I met with the with Dr. Eric Finale. When I met with him, Nigel Rama was walking out of the state house. I don't know if that was an ambush. But I always thought it was. I always thought they wanted me and him to be in one room so they could de-escalate that situation. Thankfully, we, ne we were never in the same room. But it makes me, you know, it reminds me of that Jeffrey Epstein thing. That is what, just that, that, this is the vibe the party is giving me. I have no respect for these people. I don't think they're fit to lead in any capacity. They have no respect for any, for themselves. They are doing the dirtiest of the dirt to people here to women especially and to, to little boys to children it's uh it's atrocious it's something that uh, these people need to go to prison they need this is something that you need to put people in prison for and it's like it's something that is ingrained in the culture here it's, it's something cultural and I can't make sense out of it. I mean, I mean, I've been the victim of it, and and what they're doing was it's so it's so crazy that like look at look at where I'm at right now. Like even Tara said, this has never happened before. It's like what else am I supposed to do? They have gone above and beyond to make this thing seem like it never happened. The gaslighting is insane, incredibly insane. So the only reaction to that craziness is for me to come and be 
in their faces telling them, no, I know what happened and you know what happened to me and yet you're doing this. They're trying to, to intimidate. They don't know that they cannot intimidate me. They don't know that because I've been shamed, I've been scorned and I need vindication, not for me, but for victims, for these children. And my heart breaks for them. I have nieces. I have, I just have a heart. I'm sorry, but it's, it's that's just how it is. The Minister of, Edu of Education, she met with me when I was in high school, like, good grief. She's the one who's literally saying things like, oh, that that is rape, that isn't rape. Children should always be protected. And yet she was there with drama, like, yet these women are there. Like, what, like, what, what? Like, I, it's something I cannot make sense of. I'm, I'm literally rambling, but it's crazy. And this is the start of something that I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but I just hope we can do better. I really just hope we can do better. This is this is crazy. I've poof. There, there. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you, Pastor uh, Peter, for your for your bravery. Uh, you need to Thank you for attending. And we will keep you mm -hmm. in the ball through your through your email. And we let the chip fall with the main. A natural way to stay ready, baby. Because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. What you're seeing there, folks, is the president of Guyana, Mohamed Irfan Ali, feeding the soldiers, senior ranks, the most senior um, members of the Guyana police force. Can we see people there? Colonels, lieutenant colonels, those are the ranks that I recommend, recognize. 